journey's end at Weymouth, after 143 miles from the capital. The three-coach train is now all in the blue and grey livery of BR. Alexandra Bridge offers a fine vantage point for viewing engines on and off shed, as well as mainline activity. 73093 is backing down for a relief Channel Island boat train. Three four zero two one Dartmoor arrives on the Weymouth portion of the twelve thirty five from Waterloo. The boat train was a heavy task for a standard class five. The main portion on this May day was in the hands of a merchant navy Pacific. On the 11th of May, Aberdeen Commonwealth comes off shed. She was no stranger to Weymouth being allocated here until the timetable changes at the beginning of April 1967. At that time, Weymouth had the remaining 10 on their allocation, making the shed the only one in the country with the sole remaining 8P power classification locomotives. Between 4 and 6 in the afternoon, Weymouth was the busiest place for steam on the southern at this time. We have seen there could be up to two boat train departures. Now 34,001 Exeter arrives on the 1501 from Bournemouth. Thirty-five thousand and seven was given the sixteen forty-seven departure to Bournemouth, seen on the one in seventy-four gradient through Upway and Broadway, passing the junction for the lifted Abbotsbury branch, which diverged west behind the up platform. Seventy-six thousand and nine was the next up on the seventeen hundred Weymouth to Waterloo parcels. At 1730, 34024 Tamar Valley passes the engine shed with a train for Waterloo. And 11 minutes later, Elder Dempster Lines has charge of the 1741 to Bournemouth, the driver giving me a cheery wave. Seeing the normal working of steam on the southern, as it was generally around May 1967, we joined the only rail tour. On emerging from the tunnel, notice the catch points leading onto a sand drag on the upline before passing Upway Wishing Well Hall. At Weymouth, there was £50,000 attractive effort backing on for the return run to Bournemouth. The very clean 73029, seen previously on Bournemouth Shed, had arrived, and so had 76026 from its labours on the first run on the Swanage branch. Promptly at 5 p.m., the pair of engines set out to tackle the 1 in 74 and 1 in 50 climb to Bingham Summit. The six and a half miles to Dorchester Junction from a dead start, including the four and a quarter miles of uphill running, was achieved in the 12 minutes allowed. Our pair of standards are on the 1 in 50 past Upway Wishing Well Hawk. The 
signal at Dorchester Junction is clear. Weymouth. Nearly two hours were spent at Weymouth for 4498 to be serviced on the shed. In those days it was possible to use the footpath alongside the east of the line to follow the engine to shed. The tour stock is being shunted in the background by one of Weymouth's 204 horsepower diesel shunters, later class 03. Four four nine eight goes towards the XGWR coal stage. This scene is not unlike her last shed in BR service, Aberdeen Ferry Hill, where there was also a stage of similar type using tubs. There still seems to be a plentiful supply of coal wagons behind the stage, even though there was only five weeks to go to the end. Firstly, the engine goes over a pit for fire cleaning. Fortunately, not all that clinker and ash laying about came from 4498. Nevertheless, the fire was cleaned thoroughly and the ash pan cleared out. It appears that half the tender has been cleared of coal. Servicing continues with the loco inspector keeping his eye on things. After all, this is a privately owned locomotive. Next, coal is taken. The view from the ground shows the tractor shovel, which was hired in periodically to clear ash and clinker, labour employed at the shed being at a minimum. The fireman sorts out the coal to his liking, which seems to be of different sizes from this view of the tender. The warship diesel in the background had worked in from Bristol. Now it is off to turn on the table. 4498 was the second A4 ever to use the X Great Western table. A year before, 60,024 Kingfisher had used it. seen, the A4 was a very tight fit. The table would turn engines for another five weeks. When the shed was used for storage of withdrawn engines from July the 9th, the depot stayed open for a while, but by 1970 the site was cleared. All this is now a housing estate. Every move, every inch travelled by 4498 was meticulously recorded by the army of enthusiasts present. Mass trespass was endured by BR on this unique occasion before the A4 departed Weymouth station. The train pulled out of the station and stopped just before Alexander Bridge for the buffering up of the banking engine, in this case 3408-7145 squadron. Cameraman Richard Elliott was on hand at the now closed Wishing Well Halt as the tour climbed the 1 in 50 to the summit, the grade slightly easing to 1 in 52 at the halt. An 
on board camera captures the scene. First the short tunnel under the main Weymouth to Dorchester Road. A cutting preceded the 819 yard Binkham Tunnel. At about this time was replaced by a bus. Returning past Corfe Castle to Wareham, the fireman of 34089 would now use up all that coal he had brought forward for the run to Weymouth with the 12 well-filled coaches, a load of over 400 tonnes. A stop was made at Radipole Hort and a pull forward as well as the platform is only short to drop those passengers wishing to visit the locomotive shed. Nobody was going the long way round by a Dorchester Road, were they? The shortest route was via the railway line. Well, there is not much about on a Sunday, is there? Backmore Vale has arrived from Fareham, but not turned yet. 34108 has arrived from Wareham and got to the table first. These two would haul the tour to Salisbury via Bournemouth. Three four zero eight nine has arrived from the station and comes on shed to replenish its coal supply. A special stop was made at Radipole Hawk to pick up tour participants from the shed. This was the last society sponsored rail tour on the Southern. A very good day out for four pounds. It was now left to BR to run the last rail tours of all. On the 2nd of July they ran two out of the five proposed at a price well above the normal fares which could be obtained for... The most regular of steam workings throughout the summer had been the Channel Island boat trains to Weymouth. The Friday down and return up and the Saturday up trains were worked by 35023 Holland Africa line. Here she arrives in Weymouth Goods Yard for the train to be taken onto the quay down Commercial Road by an 03 diesel shunter. For 35023 it was light engine to shed. Climbing Bingham Bank at Upway and Broadway, the last time the boat train was hauled by steam was Saturday the 8th of July by 35023. Time was running out for enthusiasts to see the locomotives they had chased for so long. Shed visits like this one to Weymouth were undertaken to pay their last respects. The standard mogul under the crane would not get its repair. Weymouth Shed, with Salisbury, were used to store the withdrawn engines after July the 9th. Eventually 26 were here, before being towed away to the Southwell scrapyards. 34093 Saunton has arrived from Eastleigh, its final duty being the 3rd of July. When the last three locomotives were towed away at the end of the year, Saunton was one of them. For the record, the other two were sister engine 34095 and standard 573092. The brush type force continued to visit Weymouth Shed up to 1970. Guildford Shed housed the only USA tank outside Eastleigh or Southampton.